Sunday, the day Christians worship. Sunday, the first day, did not replace the Sabbath, which originally was not a day of worship. Nevertheless, why do Christians worship on Sunday? Let us explore the Word of God for this insightful answer. The day Israel left Egypt, they were told not to do any work on the first and seventh days during the Feast of Weeks. And in the first day, there shall be an holy convocation, and on the seventh day, there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. Assembling for worship on the first day was an instruction from God, not Constantine or any Pope. And he shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that he brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall he number fifty days, and he shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. The day after the seventh Sabbath was the fiftieth day, the first day, the day of Pentecost, a Sunday. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. The Christian church was born on the first day, Sunday. Since the days of creation and the first time in Israel's history, souls were being saved en masse. This was the inauguration and formalization of the apostolic church on a Sunday. Later, John would call the first day the Lord's Day because Christ also rose on the first day, Sunday. When the church faced persecution, Christians continued to meet on the first day, not the Sabbath. Here is the evidence. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. And after eight days again, his disciples were with him. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread. In his advice to the converts at Rome, Paul said, one man esteem it one day above another, another esteem it every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Paul was not an advocate for Sabbath observation, neither was it his custom to keep the Sabbath. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must need have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Here in Thessalonica, he spent three Sabbaths reasoning with them that Jesus was the Messiah. It was customary for him to reason about Jesus on the Sabbath, not Sabbath keeping. Like all other Jewish boys, it was customary for Jesus to be in the synagogue on the Sabbath as a child. As a grown up and just after his baptism, he revisited the synagogue and the Jews decided to kill him on the Sabbath day. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him onto the brow of the hill whereon the city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. Worshipping on the first day was given from as early as the Exodus. Sunday is the first day. The apostles met for worship on the first day, Sunday. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. Worshiping on Sunday was already an apostolic teaching 
and practiced years before Roman Catholicism existed. Therefore, no Pope could have changed the day from Sabbath to Sunday. Christians worship on Sunday because it is an apostolic teaching and practice.